Stand by, we're up to speed. Oh, um, hello. I mean, good evening. M my name is Collier, Lance Corporal Collier. Um, I've not done any television uh, announcing before. I'm, I mean, I'm not really qualified to. I'm a, I'm a Lance Corporal. Only I was booked to do a sketch later on in the show, and and the uh, the chap who was who was doing the announcing originally, he didn't turn up, so they asked me to step into the breaches. Right, um, the play. I have some gifts for you. Some small. Sorry, loves, I've gone completely. <laughs> Somebody moved. Will you please stop moving in front of the actors, Sorry. please? Right, love, we'll go again. And cue. I have some gifts for you. Mementos of. I'm Simon Paul. What are the actual words? I have some gifts for you, mm. mementos of times more kind. That's it. Occasions mm. far happier than these in which we find ourselves. Of course, in which we find ourselves, thank you. Ready? Yeah. Right, still running. Quietly, please, and cue. I set some gifts. Mementos of war times. Occasionally happy. Sorry, it's sorry, it's love. Uh, sorry, love. Uh, Not to stop you there. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, the words weren't right, love. Oh. Well, I, I thought that paraphrasing was all right. Seemed all right. Well, don't worry. We'll go again. Just relax. Once more and cue. I sat some gifts. Happily occasion. Oh, sat some gifts. <laughs> don't know where that came from. No. All the time. No, 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 no really. Lazy, you can stand up. Honestly. Famous all the time. We'll try it on cue cards, love. Over there. Take this as your camera here. Stand up. And cue. I have some gifts for you. Mementos of times more kind, occasions far happier than these in which we find... What's that word? Ourselves! I'm sorry. It's written rather oddly. Right, well, we're going again, and cue. No, well, you see, the, the thing is, I don't usually do this. You see, I'm a Lance Corporal, and I know how to uh, strip clean and maintain a brain gun, for instance, but I mean, they don't teach you anything about television announcing in the army. I mean, maybe they should, you never know. Mm. Well, now it's time for tonight's lecture, and we go over... Uh, to the to that Attenborough Museum to join David Science. Our next guest is a Mr. Wilfred Cribbage from Frem. From Frem. No, no, from. Yes, yes, from. From Frem. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. Yes, from Frem. Yes. And uh, Mr. Wilfred Cribbage is a Madame Butterfly collector. Uh, what exactly do you do? Well, I have the largest collection of Madame Butterflies in the world. My hobby is collecting different species of Madame Butterfly. Uh, in what way? Well, Germans, Italians, Sopranos, anyone who portrays the dusty, tragic heroine of Puccini's classic light opera. Uh, where do you get your Madame Butterflies from? 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 Yes, do you get them from from? From the garden. Uh, from your frame garden? From Covent Garden, Sadler's Wells, Glyndebourne, etc. Oh, I see, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, and um, how does this differ from ordinary butterfly collecting? Well, of course, you see, it's far more dangerous. I mean, ordinary butterflies are tiny, insipid little things with wings you can easily pull off. But, I mean, trying to drag a 13 and a half stone operatic heroine off stage in mid-aria, well, <laughs> that's a totally different kettle of fish. I see, yes. Uh, uh, well, could, could we see them, please? Oh, yes, certainly, of course, yes. Well, I had uh, quite a struggle with this one, getting her off the stage, but uh, 
The chap who was playing Monsieur Butterfly, he gave me a hand. Splendid fellow. Yes, well, that's uh, a bit interesting. Yes. Um, would you, uh, would you like to ask me a question? No. No, uh, hmm. I, I, I'm sorry, this, this seems to have fizzled out rather a lot. It, oh. it, it started off quite well, yes. and then it sort of, well, suddenly stopped. Um, <coughs> oh, well, uh, never mind. <laughs> Slater was arrested, tried, and given 15 years. Prentice appealed successfully, received a conditional discharge, and was run over on the way home. But this is... But this... It's all... But this is all... Ah, oh, next! Hello tonight. I'm so <coughs> sorry. Hello tonight. Ah, sorry. Hello. Pause. Tonight. Rutland Witten. Oh, dear. Hello and welcome to Rutland Week. End. What? End! Oh, okay. Next. Um, hello. Um, um, um. Next! Oh. Hello, and welcome to Rutland Weekend Television. Terrific! Hello, and welcome to Rutland Weekend Television. Can you say anything else? What? Can you say anything else? Yes, yeah, Sven, Skas, Marcus, Bob. All right, all right, all right. Go away, go away, go away. Whose Swedish girlfriend was that? Next! Hello. And hello. And welcome, welcome to, to Rutland, Rutland, weekend, weekend television. Yes. Oh, oh, go, go on, go away, go away. Oh, this is terrible. Look, look, look here, Betty, why don't you do it? Me? Yes. Oh, I couldn't. Yeah, of course you could. It's easy. But I'm too plain. Nonsense. All you have to do is take off your glasses, let it... Oh, you're right. You're far too plain. Twelve seconds later. Betty, look, I'm sorry. You'll have to do the rest of it. OK, so Ray. So do it all. John. Oh, sorry. But this is all part of life's rich pattern. Well, now on Rutland Weekend, it's time for tonight's documentary. One woman whose life has been ruined by the selfish activities of these car swappers is Mrs Wrigley from Monotony in Surrey. We took our cameras down to Surrey to invade her privacy. Mrs Wrigley, what happened to you? Well, my husband had been on at me to swap our car. I thought he meant get a new one. I never dreamt. Take your time, Mrs. Wrigley, but just remember that film is bloody expensive. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Not at all. Well, the upshot was that we attended one of those parties. I had a beautiful Renault. My husband made me throw the keys on the bed. And the next time I looked, this blonde, brassy lady was going off with my Renault. <laughs> I was left with a bloody Ferrari. <laughs> I still can't afford the insurance. <laughs> Cut the film. It's too bloody expensive with all this crying. <laughs> Look, stop filming, will you? Look, I told you in there, I'm nothing to do These with it. These people here it's are making a documentary a about this man here Look, against his it. will. Oh, or they'd be allowed to get away with this, or should there be some kind of law respecting his privacy? This is the subject of tonight. This man here this. is making a documentary about these people here invading okay, the privacy of that man the there film. by this making a documentary. Right. And this hi shove off. And this highlights a growing problem here to go away. A growing problem here today. Too many documentaries, not enough subjects. Well, uh, we seem to have lost the camera there. Uh, it uh, seems to have run away. It rather looks as though it's going to the seaside. Welcome to Holiday 75. Well, it's not so far been a very good year for holidays, what with travel firms collapsing, currency problems and inflation generally. 
In fact, with the difficulties and uncertainties of the tour operators likely to increase, many people this year are taking the holidays here in the Holiday 75 studio. You can't do better than visit the Holiday 75 programme. Relax in the BBC car park. Enjoy the wonders of the BBC golf course. Or take the scenic route through some of the world's most exciting scenery. The scenery of the palaces, the scenery of Zed cars, and the wonderful scenery of the Lulu show. You can ride up and down in the comfortable lifts. Or you can go and see the scenery again. Yes, it's fun aplenty. And you don't have to worry about the weather. Good evening. Here is the latest weather forecast. Rain is still falling here in Hendon and is expected to continue for at least another hour. But here in the studio, the outlook is fine and should continue that way at least for another week. OK? Bye-bye. Yes, here you can keep fully up to date with the latest news and weather as it actually happens. Or you can go and see the scenery again. Visit the offices of exciting TV stars and see them in their wonderful natural habitat. Uh-oh, go easy with him, girls. Yes, once you've holidayed here, you'll return again and again. Last year, me and my wife spent a fortnight with Richard Baker. This year, we're going to Kenneth Kendall for a week and coming back via Nationwide. And there are a million things to do in the evenings. You can visit the shows. You can even work on the shows. About his childhood and how happy he was living uh, in the Highland Way. Or you can just dance to the music of Top of the Pops in the control room of the very studio where they make it. <laughs> and run, TK! <laughs> I see, I see, I see. Yeah, there's a bit more, apparently. Um... Oh, sorry, yeah. Yes. Um, um, this, this is set in, in a smart restaurant vestib... Vest... Vestib... 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 Anyway. Enter, enter man. Good evening. I wonder... Oh, up! Excuse me? Yes, can I help you? Yes. I'm a little bit confused. Oh, yes? What seems to be the trouble? Well, everything keeps changing. My hat, my clothes, and, and so on. Oh, yes, madam. I'm afraid this part suffers from bad continuity. What? You'll get used to it. Oh. Could you tell me the way to Dr. Schlesinger's, please? Certainly. I'll walk straight down the street to the end. Yes. Take your first turning on the right. Yes. Go along for about a hundred yards. Yes. Turn left and you can't miss it. Thank you very much. Not at all. Good morning. Walk down this street to the end. Take the first turning on the right. Go along for about a hundred yards. Turn left and you can't miss it. Sit down, Mildred. Now, how did you know that was me? I've just been having a look at some of your rushes. Now, Mildred, you've got what we film doctors call bad continuity. Oh, dear. How did that happen? Well, I'm afraid you caught it, probably watching too many bad films. Oh, dear. Now, I'm going to try to edit out the next two weeks and see how you feel then. How do you feel now? 
A bit hungry. Uh, but the continuity is better. Oh, yes. Any, any further problems? Well, I've still got bad sound. What do you mean, your violins go all... Oh, that's it, yes. Anything else? Well, I do suffer rather a lot from flashbacks. I mean, everything ripples and I go into the past. I see. When did all this start? Well, it all started a few years ago in Brighton, when I was on the beach with my husband, George. Mildred, what are you doing here? It's a flashback. But you're supposed to be with Dr Schlesinger. Yes, I know, but I was just telling him about when I was here at Brighton with you. Well, there we were on the beach together. Oh, listen, that's my voiceover. But this is years ago. Yes, do you remember? I certainly do. Now, I was sitting here talking about the concept of time. That's right, we've been arguing about Gilbert Ryle. Yes, and I was saying... That reminds me of the time when I was in college at Rutland University. Well, I couldn't have been more than 20. And I was very much in love with Jim, a handsome philosophy student. Oh, Jim, I'm so happy. I'm happy that you're happy, Mildred. I haven't been so happy since I was a little girl. Were you a happy little girl? Oh, yes, very. I remember once, I couldn't have been more than 10. And we had this beautiful house, and I was sitting on my rocking horse, and my mummy came up to me. Lost in thought again, Mildred. What are you thinking about? Oh, mummy, mummy. I was just remembering what it was like to be a baby. Really, dear? Yes, I remember having a bottle. Nanny Blenkinsop was on duty at the time. Nice. Isn't that a lovely baby? Oh, it's such a sweet baby. Quickly, Doctor. My wife is trapped by flashbacks. Here she is. Quick, after. This is where she rippled, Doctor. Quickly, man. There's no time to be lost. Well, no, she's gone, I'm afraid. Have you seen Mildred? I do hope you're in time. Ah, oh, at last. There you are, Mildred. No, no, I'm afraid you're too early. Too late, you mean? No, no, too early, you see. We're still waiting for little Mildred or little Jack. You know, darling, I was just thinking about our honeymoon. The time we conceived this little child. No, no! we have gone to Italy for a month. For heaven's the sake, warm it'll all be spring. done for! God! <laughs> Too late! It just shows how dangerous bad films can be. A new season of Classically Bad American Films starts next week on Rutland Weekend Television with the classic widescreen romance Fiddle Dee Dee. Set in the deep south of Hollywood, it tells the classic story of love without touching. Wow, Mr. Bennett, I never expected y'all to say such a thing. Miss Bell, would you take it amiss if I told you something? Why, no, Mr. Bennett. Why, Miss Bell, the thing is, I'm mighty fond of you. Why, I'm mighty fond of you too, Mr. Bennett. And I was just wondering if you'd care to be... What? If you'd care to be... Well, you can see more of that, hopefully, on the widescreen classic. And you can find out whether she would care to be or not to be, that is the question. This is Kevin Tripp. Writing a sequel to Splash, his award-winning bathtime theatre production. Kevin's a Marxist who uses the image of the bathroom to express his complex and imparts highly critical view of the washing classes. It can take several months before a finished script, dry enough to submit, is completed. But once there, Kevin takes it along to the nice people at the BBC for a working lunch with the head of drama, the head of drama's friend and various other interested parties, such as the designer, the cameraman, and the plumber. The conversation can be hard and acrimonious, and there may be some splashing before everyone is thoroughly satisfied. In fact, today is no exception, and the head of drama's friend leaves in a huff. But this is all part of the hard, bitchy world of television drama, and no one takes it seriously. Oh, yeah? Well, not many people take it seriously. Oh, yeah? 
These men are all ex-heads of BBC drama. It's a desperate and tough life, and they share it with ex-heads of other BBC departments and their friends. Once these men had their own carpets and curtains, and a chance to have dinner with Hugh Weldon. Now they're just film producers. This man is Ronald Ruff Myerscuff Jones, the friend of yet another ex-head of BBC drama, Dick Truffitt, who produced the BBC Bath of the Month production, Separate Tables. Set in a shower bath near Hendon, it revolutionised BBC drama and led to such classics as The Importance of Being Soapy, Oliver Reed and Claudia Cardinale in Room at the Tub, and the controversial B-Day version of Camelot. Camelot! Two minutes, please, Minister. Oh, thank you. This man is a politician. In a few moments, he'll be doing a well-paid television job. In the street outside, a line of shivering men wait, hopefully. These are MPs who are not so fortunate, queuing desperately for the chance of a job in television. A chat show, a discussion, a panel game, anything will do as they face the sad fact that for MPs, there just aren't enough television jobs to go round. I gotta work. Please, Mr. Robinson, my constituents are muttering. I haven't done a telly for three months. I'm sorry, John. They said you'd had too much to drink. Oh, I'll leave it alone. You can be as drunk as you like in the house, John, but these television people are touching. Oh, my God! Bo Robinson is in casting. He's responsible for booking top politicians. Most of the major political stars started off looking for work here. Morning. Morning. Any jobs? Name. Oh, any jobs, Mr. Robinson? No, no, no. Your name. Oh, um, Watkins, Luton South. Majority. Uh, 340. Sure. Any previous experience? Uh, well, I was on the news at 10 once. When? Uh, well, I, I was at the back of shot. I, I, I was just behind Reginald Bosenkett's head. I mean, if he'd moved his head a little more to the left, uh, you'd have seen my ear. Have you got a famous dog or a daughter with big tits or anything? Uh, no. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, things are very tight at the moment. I can juggle. Can you? Well, we could use that. A juggling MP. We could certainly work on that. Do you think you could juggle and answer questions at the same time? Um, yes, I think so. Well, I'll give Robin a ring and see what we can do. It's not only casting sessions that are difficult. There are the... Hello, I bet you're wondering why we're here Sitting on our bums without a stitch of gear Well, as it happens, our budget has expired And everything's gone back to the place from whence it's hard And so, although you know we never bitch There's not a single funny set we haven't got a stitch For we've overspent our budget, Gord, not half now there's nothing left to spend to make you laugh. Our hospitality is all drunk, our producer's done a bunk, our director's lying down with an aspirin. The man who is in charge of all the money has a large question mark hanging over him and his future. And so, although our budget is quite steep, 6,000 quid or so, which isn't very cheap, that's what it costs to make you bleed a smile and we've been and overspent it by a mile consequently we're sitting here on our bums in the BBC towels we borrowed from our chums in the wardrobe department there's approximately five minutes or so to go well maybe three perhaps they'll switch us off early to save electricity oh, oh they have Just a minute, will you? Please, could you? Uh, well, that that is that is all for us. From that is all for for, for us. That is from from us. From us. That that is all for for from. That is all for from us tonight for this evening. Um, special guest Peter. Bartlett and the wrong film sound was John Horton and gra graphic designer Smith. The, the costume was Reg Jones, the designer was Andrew Gosling and the producer was 1976.
1976. Next Monday marks the 80th anniversary of the birth of Churchill's cat. Rutland Weekend will be celebrating this event with a four-hour dramatisation of the cat's life, with Sir Laurence Olivier playing the vet and Arthur Askey as Puss. There's also an exhibition of Churchill's cat litters at the Victoria and Albert Museum, and you can buy a memorial medallion with a picture of Churchill and a little pussycat. On Tuesday at 10.30, you can see It's the Churchills Again. This non-award-winning 192-part drama series continues with Lulu as Rita McChurchill, the little-known aunt of Fred Churchill, who was to grow up to be not a relation of any of the famous ones. Thursday night on RWT means, of course, Top of the Pops. Well, you can see more of Churchill's people on top of the Rutland Pops on Thursday. Just some of the things you can look forward to on Rutland Weekend. Rutland Weekend Television is closing down now, and we leave you in the capable hands of the next rather lovely BBC announcer. Was it all right, though, the bit I did? It was lousy! Um, how, how, how did it seem out there? Terrible! Sheer death! Uh, did, did it come across all right? Diabolical! Um, you can say quite frankly, you know. Quite frankly, it stank! If, if you didn't like it, pl please just say... I didn't like it! It was horrible! Um, Please feel free to say what you felt, because I shan't be hurt. Hurt? You should be put down. You made me ill. No, but if, if you felt it wasn't too good, please just say, because any criticism helped. Help! You're beyond help. You made me vomit. Uh, you can say quite honestly. All right, all right, it was fine. Really? Yeah, yeah. You really liked it? Yeah, it was just great. Now shove off. Oh, thanks. 